Speaking Republican Senator Roy Blunt of Missouri right now. Senator, thanks for joining us again on this week. You heard uh, former President Trump in Pierre's piece saying he did nothing wrong. Do you agree with that? Was he right to take these documents to Mar-a-Lago? Well, I think we need to know more about the documents. One of the things I was concerned about when I heard about this uh, so-called raid or, or seizing these documents uh, was uh, uh, why hadn't the Intelligence Committee that I've been on for my time in the Senate and time in the House, why hadn't we heard anything about this? In fact, if the administration was concerned that there was a national security problem, uh, I got immediately involved with uh, Chairman Warner and uh, Vice Chairman Rubio and said, we need to get a letter out right now to the Justice Department and the Director of National Intelligence say, if there really is a problem, why haven't you told us about that problem? That hasn't happened yet, but the uh, Director of National Intelligence announced, I think on Friday, that she's going to be briefing the committee soon, and then we'll know what the problem is. But I will say this, we hadn't been told there was a problem, and that this has been but, going but, on but, for but months, Senator, that, that, that's, there that's was a problem. Point. The Oversight Committee should have been told. That, that's a fair point, and we'll find out why, why they weren't or what was going on. It was probably to protect the criminal investigation. But, but setting that aside, whether or not these documents were classified, was it right for the president to take these government documents, which he's supposed to turn over to the National Archives, down to Mar-a-Lago? Uh, it was. You should be very careful with classified documents. I've been had access to documents like that for a long time. I'm incredibly careful. I was wondering as I was listening to that discussion if the same things were said uh, when Secretary Clinton had documents, when Director Comey had documents, they had them on the Internet, which is much more dangerous than having them in a box somewhere. But everybody needs to be more careful about how these documents well, are so, so, Senator, you're still not answering. We need to be sure that. we you're, don't you're characterize them differently. Well, you're still not, you're not answering the question. You were critical of Senator Clinton, who actually turned over uh, what she had, turned over all her devices. What we have here is a situation where the president did not turn over uh, these documents. Can you say whether that was right or, or right or wrong? Do you believe it was right for the president to take those documents to Mar-a-Lago? He should have turned the documents over and apparently had turned a number of documents over. George, what I wonder about is why this could go on for almost two years and less than 100 days before the election. Suddenly we're talking about this rather than the economy or inflation or even the student loan program you and I were going to talk about today. Well, it, it, it went on because the president didn't turn over the documents, correct? He was asked several times. He didn't turn them over. He was subpoenaed. He didn't respond to the subpoena. The, you know, the, these documents apparently, good, good thing they're going to have a special master look at these documents to sort through the documents that the president had every right to have and the documents that he hadn't yet turned over. I understand he turned over a lot of documents. He should have turned over all of them. Uh, I imagine he knows that very well now as well. Well, he hasn't said that. He said he did nothing wrong. But I do want to ask you about the president's, President Biden's decision to forgive student loan debt. Your reaction? Well, I think, it, one, I'm the first person in my family to graduate from uh, college. I was a university president for four years. Higher education uh, is important. It should impact the way people live their lives. I just thought it was monumentally unfair. Unfair uh, to people who didn't go to college because they didn't think they could afford it unfair to people who had paid their loans back, unfair to people who got uh, higher education in an area that the government didn't make loans, uh, and just bad economics in addition to that. I think it's going to have a long-term devastating effect on a student loan program that had worked pretty effectively until about 10 years ago when the federal government assumed responsibility for that program. Uh, most economists who looked at it said it's not going to increase inflation. Well, if that's what they're thinking, most economists are, are wrong. You can't, you can't forgive that much debt and assume people won't spend the money for other things. It's certainly going to take about $24 billion that should have been coming into the federal government every year in payments and make that available for more spending. You know, the president says it's going to grow the economy. So how it doesn't impact inflation and grows the economy, you've got... Uh, three to maybe $500 billion going back into the economy in 10 years at a time when the Federal Reserve Chairman is saying we've got to do everything we can to slow the economy down. You don't slow the economy down by forgiving debt and giving people another $24 billion to spend that they would have been spending paying off the student debt that they borrowed. And when you pay off the student debt that they borrowed, other people have a chance uh, to have that money in the future to use for 
uh, their opportunity to go to college. You know, Pell Grants matter. I've been one of the great advocates in the Congress for well over a decade of Pell Grants that help people go to school who can't afford to go to school. Uh, Pell Grant recipients are going to be treated differently uh, in this way than others, but uh, th there's a way to do this that's fair to people who have a challenge going to college uh, and doesn't wind up forgiving debt of people who, George, you could have a, a joint filer a joint filing where one of the people's currently not working and the other one makes $250,000 and they get twenty, ten, or $20,000 forgiven by the federal government. That's just wrong. The administration Senator. have been very hesitant to do this and here they are doing it right before the election and I think uh, people know they got their debt forgiven. Other people won't know the impact that has on them or their taxes between now and election day. Senator Blunt, thanks for your time this morning. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.